Hello everyone, my name is Ajit Tree. This is AGDQ 2024, supporting the Prevent Cancer Foundation, and this is 30XX. The five second version is, what if Mega Man X were roguelike? And for the longer version, I'm gonna introduce my co-commentators, two wonderful contractors here, helping me through our multiverse of possibilities. On the couch today, we have Mr. Cab 55 Hello. A recently minted fan of the 30XX series. Oh, I've want... loved this series for a while. He just made me play the game in the speedrun time. Got it. Mi recently minted fan of this game. And coming to us from across the country, we have uh, one of the most seasoned contractors out there, one of the lead devs of this game, CK, a.k.a. Mr. Chris King. How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. Uh, incredible. Uh, it's so lovely to be here. Awesome. We are very honored and glad to have you with us. Uh, first thing you're probably noticing is that the vibes, the aesthetics of this game are absolutely immaculate. City Fires, the composer, as previously noted in one of our uh, generous donation comments, absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. You'll hear it for the whole run as we go through. Um, get into a little bit of discussion about what we're going to be doing today and how we're going to be doing it. We will be playing as uh, Ace. The rest of the Mega Man block will be more of a jump and shoot affair, but this is more of a slice and stab run. We'll be playing as uh, player two mode, if you will. And uh, with the most recent patch of the game, we also have access to a number of color palettes. So I'm going to be using a Draco Pence uh, because I don't know if uh, the team at Battery Stable Games intended this, but this is the closest to trans rights colors that we have available to us, and it's also the set that in-game uh, signifies power. So whether it was intentional or not, uh, I agree with the ethos that trans people are exceptionally powerful, and uh, so I'm, I'm grateful to have this opportunity. Yeah, it's totally intentional. Thanks to everyone's amazing generosity, I have to stop off at this station first to turn on a bunch of extra challenge conditions. This is going to be everything from reducing healing efficacy to putting a timer that will poison us if we don't make it to the end of stage in time, letting enemies move and shoot faster, making enemies more dangerous by uh, including elite variants who do more damage and have better attacks, giving every enemy in the game more health. Regular enemies and mini bosses get 30%, bosses get 150%. Adding extra challenges and dangers to rooms that are normally meant to help you power up during the run. And introducing a new system that makes it so that we have to remember in between every level, and Mr. Cab will probably help me out with that if I forget, to change our equipment to power up as best we can. And also, uh, that in Ace's case in particular, makes it so that his inherent energy, the, the power use um, meter, drops off entirely to zero if he gets hit at any point. So, we have a lot working against us, but working in favor, we also have a few things. This is a roguelite, and since we are playing a New Game Plus category, we have all of the meta progression upgrades available to us. Most important for today is the Environment Configurator. This lets us prefer up to two levels to show up in the first half of the run, and banish up to two levels to the second half of the run. So we'll be preferring a few levels that have great movement options and powers for Ace, and sending one to the end that hopefully, when we get there, will be much easier. Other things we have working in our favor are Dally the Cat here. So again, because of your incredible generosity, I'm going to do a quick sound balance to make sure that when we pet Dally, everyone can hear her. She is so cute. Thank you very much for your generosity. I'm so glad this is part of it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, guys. And the other thing we have working in our favor is the Mysterious Trader. She offers us up to five... Oh, I don't have the right save here. Uh oh That's very odd. Let's see. If we're able to do something with that, uh, I'm going to need like 30 seconds, maybe? I should be able to get this fixed. Yeah, I'm going to have to make one change out of game, if that's not clear. Yeah, sure, no problem. Would you like a donation in the meantime or something? Yes, please. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry about, about that. Uh, we've got $50 from Ryko404 donating for the Mega Man block. 30XCX is a lot of fun, and Mega Man 3 is my first and probably my favorite classic Mega Man game. Donating for the Buster-only run to show off all the extra strats for those of us that didn't want to use weapon energy. Shout-outs to the tech crew for keeping this marathon going smoothly. I'm happy to announce we have actually blown past... $8,000 needed for Buster only. We have reached that incentive. Thank you so much. One more, if you would. Absolutely. 
We've got $50 from Ghost Phoenix. Glad to see probably my favorite game that came out last year on GDQ, and good luck to a tea tree. Here's $50 to remember to pet the dally. Also, scripture incentive win. Got one more? Absolutely. One more. Sure. We've got uh, $30.24 from Triumphant Base. Here's $30 30XDX to 30XDX. That's 30.XX cents. So if you want to get those donations, we can start a $30 and something cents donation train. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, well, we have worked our way through the confusion and entropy of the Steam Cloud save system, and we are ready to get back to things. The entropy modifier we did not expect. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't plan for that one. Actually, I did, and here we are anyways. So yeah, the last thing we have working in our favor is the mysterious trader who offers us up to five items that we can take into the run with us immediately, and Dally will actually show up very early in the run to give us one additional boon. These five items are creating two combos that basically uh, represent the New Game Plus category, uh, increase our odds of getting through the game as quickly as possible. Items two and four here that you can see on your screen are uh, basically a wax and wane system. Uh, we are making a location called the Very Safe Laboratory show up in every level one to nine out of 10 in this run. And what it does is it offers some of the most powerful augments in the game called prototypes that also have significant downsides. So we accept a lot of risk on to ourselves and we power up uh, as much as we can. Uh, item number two there, the prototype resonator, which I will go ahead and take, makes those upsides even stronger as long as we can survive the downsides. The other three items are a combination of what we colloquially in the community call the shoplifter combo. They allow us to use a secondary currency called scrap bits, earned in a variety of ways, to spend in the store instead of having to use our primary currency. So the long and short is, as long as we have at least a little bit of currency, we're cogent of what's going on during the run, we should be able to walk into any shop that shows up during the run and walk out with every item in the place. So that's what we've got going for us. Uh, again, while I mentioned that we do have the ability to kind of prioritize levels, everything else about this game is random. Uh, like I said, there is a multitude of possibilities. Do you have yep. to go and reactivate the entropy? Yes, good call. Thank you very much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make sure we get up to 15. There we go. And probably do our environment configurator again as well. Yep. Do you have to reset these for every run through the game? So that is just gotta watch the those case. resets. Again, as some uh, as a previous donation mentioned, um, CK and the community uh, of devs are very, very attentive to people's needs and desires. So it sounds like in the future there may be an opportunity to have those sorts of things saved in. But uh, for now, thank you very much for catching me on that. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that for 1.2. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All right, without further ado, the timer starts as soon as Ace hits the ground in level one, and uh, we'll find out what it is when we get there. So in three, two, two one, one, go! You got it, buddy. Burning Temple. This is the level I would have liked to see most for level one. We'll take a bonus from Dally. This is an armor piece, kind of like the armor upgrades in Mega Man X that uh, give us new abilities. This armor piece is defensively based, and what it does is it makes it so that when we collect a health power-up, there is a small chance of also generating armor off of it, which is that silver health at the far right side of the health bar in the top uh, left. And so armor always gets taken first, and when you have any armor, you do not suffer knockback when hit. This is our first mini-boss. Yes, we're already at a mini-boss. This is one of three traversal-based mini-bosses in the game, the big wheel. I know it has a name, CK. Uh, what is that, that boss's actual name now that we've uh, made our way past him? Yeah, it's a lot more sophisticated than big wheel. It's a uh, giant rolly. Thank you. Mm. This is a very safe laboratory, so let's see what augments are on offer. Nothing that we need just now, but let's see if we can roll our way around. All right, Flaring Hysteria. This is one of two Hysteria Augs, the most powerful upsides in the game. Uh, the downside is that I now take triple damage from any incoming source. It'll be fine. Just the duck it in. Everything will be great. Exactly. You know, you've heard speedrunners say that for years, so that's exactly the uh, place we find ourselves in. I'm going to go into a challenge room. The upside of a Hysteria is that uh, normally, anytime you collect an AUG, any kind of stackable power-up for the entire rest of the game, you get two copies. With the Prototype Resonator, we instead get three copies. So that should help us uh, do our damage and health scaling as long as the game is nice to us for the rest of the run. Made it very cleanly through that challenge room, meaning we get to pick from any of the three rewards. 
Uh, I'm actually going to take the scrap bits because none of those seem particularly transformative for an early run. Use my iframes to hop through uh, the uh, fire jets and on into the whole bay before the first boss. Anything here for us? Nope, just a single dollar. Excellent. That's all right. Because our first boss here, uh, bosses do also scale with the levels you're in, so the first boss should be relatively easy. You see he is fire-based. He has a couple of different attacks. You've seen, I think, two out of four at this point. That one is arguably the most dangerous because based on where his spacing is, uh, it, it can get very difficult to avoid, especially if there are also um, attacks coming out of the ground or the walls. Once we get him down to about half health, you're going to see him uh, switch into kind of a mid-phase, which is going to involve him turtling up. And we have to defeat these four totems as quickly as possible. Get to the wall to avoid the flames. If our spacing is great, we should be able to hit some of the totems on the way out and the way back with our special weapon here. Uh, every primary weapon has a different, what's called an unleash. So our unleash for the A Saber is kind of a blade toggle. And as soon as the blade resets Ace again, he can throw it one more time. So we try to keep our spacing clever to avoid uh, Zen Primus's attacks and to catch the Saber as often as possible. While we're finishing up, Cardi, how about a donation? I've got a good one here for you. This is from, quote, the whole dang 30XDX team. And we've got a $1,000 donation. Awesome. Thank you so much to CK, uh, Red Space Beast, Wrecking Program, City Fires, whoever else may be involved in that. I was going to do that as a shout out later, but I get to thank you all now. <laughs> it says, thanks to Tea Tree and good luck. Foreverlasting peace. Foreverlasting peace. Three minutes thank out of the so first level. Thank you so much, Harvard, to get this in. Oh, my pleasure. All right. Uh, I did have the option to go to the level that contains the other mobility power-up that I'd like to see, but I'm actually going to skip it for now uh, because I do have what I need for this level because the second half of this level is a vertical climb. So we are avoiding that for now. We're going to reroll one more item. Oh, the Fatal Fury doesn't stack anymore, and that makes me sad. That's an item that um, powers you up in exchange for some of your maximum health. So I did just give away some maximum HP and gain one additional power uh, for both regular attacks and specials. In the olden days, you used to be able to take multiple copies of that at a time and just absolutely decimate your health pool in exchange for getting really, really strong. <laughs> Is, uh, was that just something you felt was a little too unbalanced, CK? Uh, no, I'm going to go uh, on record here and say that's probably a bug. You're still supposed to be able to collect that multiple times. Uh, we're still actively working on the game, even though we're post 1.0. We've still got a lot to say for the game. I think there's a lot still we want to do. Uh, and that maybe also includes introducing the occasional bug here live on the GDQ stage. <laughs> oh, well, sorry about that. These things do happen. No, you, hey, like they I do said, happen. the Battery Staple Games team is tremendously responsive to anything that comes up. By the way, we just saw uh, Loot Omega, the little brother of a boss later in the game, and the uh, trademark Loot Pinata, kind of like a, a beat in traditional Mega Man games. Uh, Loot Omega is great to see in a run because what uh, he does is he basically evens out the section of the stage that he, sh he shows up on. He gives you special golden currency worth two points each, and he gives you a special AUG at the end. I just got a Speed Demon, which is great because now I move faster, and every time I defeat a boss and go into another stage, I will move even faster. It is uh, special speed, speed now and speed later. The other hysteria is here. So now instead of getting three copies of everything, I get five copies of everything. Oh, awesome. Dear. The other downside, however, is that any health I take, uh, any damage I take that would reduce my current health below my maximum health, um, reduces the maximum health as well. So basically, I take damage directly to my maximum HP. And as I say that, I go into a gauntlet challenge room, which are extremely dangerous. They are full of enemies, chock-a-block, and I am taking triple base damage. So uh, we might be just a little bit slow to get through things to make sure that we aren't mobbed by enemies. But we'll take our chance. We'll jet through. One hit is OK. And we've made it to the Gauntlet Guardian. This is the Leg Gauntlet. These are kind of like the armor upgrade chips from Mega Man X. They make everything that you can do with the uh, piece that you collect for even better. So if we can get him down, we'll collect the Leg Upgrade. Because I did not already have a Leg Upgrade piece, uh, I now am granted one automatically. And that has introduced a new function called Corruption. Corruption is the uh, green bar above Ace's head. And... Um, when it is filling up, you are slightly better at everything you do. You move a little faster, you hit a little harder. But when it fills all the way up... One moment, making some trades. All right, capitalism completed. Um, so when corruption fills all the way up, every function you don't have a uh, armor piece for is locked out. So right now, when my corruption bar fills all the way up, 
All I can do is do kind of a hyper dash that can do damage to enemies if I dash through them. But uh, otherwise, I'm not able to regular attack. I'm not able to use special attacks. So I'm hoping this door here has some good things in, uh, in store for me. I do have the ability to buy everything in the place. And now I'm moving exceptionally fast. So that is excellent. I haven't powered up uh, damage-wise just yet, but we're ready to zoom. He also picked up that one max hit point upgrade in there, and he got it five yes. times. So his hit points is it a high triple digit number? Extreme yep. value. We love it. That is what we are here to give you. Extreme value in a variety of randomized formats. We are here on boss number two, Absolution, the boss of Penumbra, the, the, the church of 30XX. This game has a lot of things going on. It does, in fact, have a story. If you want to know what it is, I recommend you play to find out. It is basically everything that happened in between the developer's previous game, 20XX, and now. I do have to burn off that corruption energy because I literally could not attack otherwise. This is the mid-phase for this. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, quite enough strength to avoid or to defeat these before they are able to attack, especially now that I am rendered powerless. We dash our way out of it, and we see if we can make ourselves some good spacing. Yeah, this, is, this is very much an up-and-down run right now. I am trying to avoid absolutely everything that Absolution can throw at me, and she is choosing to use the Black Holes, which, uh, for Ace in particular, really make it difficult to move around, but we managed to not only defeat her, but do so on the bottom right side of the screen so we can get out the door just as quickly as possible. Wonderful. I'm going to go ahead, uh, because we are running a relatively high danger, I'm going to take the Void Double Power from Absolution. What that does is essentially for a uh, constant energy drain, it does give us a little bit of an attack uh, increase in terms of length from where we can attack. I will actually go ahead and take this. This uh, actually disables both of the powers uh, from bosses that I have. Everything except the Saber Unleash. But if I am able to succeed the entire level with the challenge the Delta has issued me, I will... Um, instead get a special core part at the end of the level. So I made a quick decision and said, hey, the relative amount of risk versus the reward I'm going to get is probably worth it. It'll slow us down a little bit, especially since I don't want to take random hits. This is a contemplation room. It's a wave-based challenge arena. Unfortunately, at best, they are basically only ever uh, time neutral, so we're not going to see that today. We did manage to slip down into where the trader is on this level. Picked up... Uh, yeah, I'm going to trade the rest of that in for armor. That's actually going to give me several hundred armor, which effectively is about uh, 10 extra hits. I needed to see what that number was real quick there. Because we're taking triple damage, it's 10 instead of, you know, 30 or 40. But it is plenty enough for our purposes for now. On into the next mid-boss. This is not an OSHA certified facility, so even the forklift driver here is very dangerous to our health. He is able to throw explosive barrels at us, and once he gets low enough on health, he will start driving towards us. Oh, well, sorry. The forklift will start driving towards us on our own. Chris, uh, embarrassing an anecdote from me. You would not believe how many dozens of hours I played this game before I realized all you have to do to get the high bounce on these spring platforms is to hold the button. You can hold up, you can hold jump, you can hold pretty much whatever you want that feels like it ought to do it, and it'll just work. Oh, good. Well, I, hey, I'm learning things even now. On into the second half of this level, one of the longest levels on average. Going to see if I can maybe use some of those explosive barrels as jump pads. We actually get a really short uh, level chunk or segment there, so I'm happy. We might have missed a power-up, but the speed we got in exchange is almost certainly worth it. On into the boss of level three here, Capital Punishment. Everyone say hi to the embodiment of uh, capitalism in this year of 30XX. He is here to uh, stomp us into paste, essentially. Although he's not going to do it himself. He doesn't like to get his hands dirty, so he hangs out at the bottom of the screen, and we try to hit him with these explosive barrels. If we had good movement options, we could move up towards him earlier. You saw me go up the wall a little bit, but this is probably the best combination of options we have available to us. I really don't want to top out that corruption bar, because then I could not attack these barrels to move them towards him. Getting very close to the end here. And right in the corner where we want it. Excellent. Nice. I've also picked up the Hover Boots, which is one piece of a set that is primarily defense-based. It gives us a nice hover, and if we collect the whole thing, we will be immune from any stationary uh, hazard. Lava pits, spikes, lasers, things of that nature. In the meantime, on to level four, Water Grab. You can see one half of the name, Water, here. And uh, very shortly, we'll probably see the other. I'm going to take this and turn it into scrap bits because I don't need the currency it would otherwise grant me. And here's the other half, the grab part. So casually, this is probably some player's least favorite level, both because the boss can be very difficult if you are a new player and because the gravity mechanics are fairly difficult to wrap your head around. But we're on a pretty good run so far. That was an elite enemy. You can see it did one and a half times damage. So instead of taking 30, I took 45. We try not to do that as often as we can. Thankfully, we are moving so quickly that we're just on into the mini-boss, our big frog friend. 
Man, frogs are so friend-shaped. Unfortunately, this is a frog that wants us dead, so uh, we, we have to return the favor. I'm sorry. I feel bad, but... Oh, that's right. okay, didn't mind. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, if, if that's kind of in, within spec for what they were built for, then I won't worry about it too much. I won't say my conscience is clear, but I won't worry about it too much. So, Chris, what are you thinking about what you've seen so far? Oh, it's incredible. Uh, I'm just watching you blow through so quickly. Uh, it's insane to see uh, double hysterias on one and two. I don't know in what percentage of your practice runs that seems to happen, but those are definitely the two prototypes that lead to you know, frequent, amazing high speed uh, in the shortest amount of time. Uh, Notice you picking up the, uh, I guess, the armor roll with the trader that immediately made your health bar so long that uh, it sort of switches to that just number-based mode. Uh, yes. When you saw uh, Tea Tree's uh, health bar go immediately to that, you just see it's because otherwise it would be like 50 blocks off the screen by now, I think. Yes, you can turn, hybrid is on by default. You can turn it off and basically just have your health bar or energy bar go off the far side of the screen. Oh, I do have powers on this level. Right. I was like, hey, I'm going to have to fight this boss without powers, and that's going to be annoying. But uh, I forgot that was the last level. So we are able to... Yeah, especially the station, make it short. Yeah, now that we have um, Experiment 9 into the second half of its health bar, once we burn off our Vagrant bar, we are able to... Because um, both of these powers that I took, um, Zen Ascent and Ryusei, the up and down powers effect, uh, respectively, they give brief contact damage immunity. So I, if I finish one of those powers um, when I'm over Experiment 9's hitbox, I do not take damage for about a half a second after that. So when he is up, I can uppercut into him and then uh, dash back down. Or I can basically just make any combination of those two based on where he is. He's not giving me a great pattern today, but that's okay because we are powerful enough that we don't need to worry about it too much. Extra move speed for us as we finish the level. Always good to see. We're at about our three-minute par time per level, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and take Leviathan, the big smiling bomb, because, you know, everything in this game is a robot, even the bombs. Pretty excited oh. for the community to get to see Leviathan shine a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It is one of um, Ace's best, uh, on average, uh, ranged options because you can, uh, you know, if you choose to take it, you don't need to have any of his other things. Weapon unleashes the other things that give him range. You can also see here, I'm going to start to use Zen Ascent more because this level has a lot more verticality. Do a quick check to see if there's an item there. There is not, but I do like to, especially in this part where there are a bunch of little cubbies, no useful prototypes there. But basically, you get a sense after playing the game, um, you know, I would say probably a few dozen hours for me, but this was, uh, 1.1 was a big patch dropped in December. So some of these level chunks and configurations I've only been familiar with for, oh, I don't know, about three three weeks, so those and some of the challenge levels we can potentially get later are largely new to me. So, uh, you know, a little bit more randomness into, uh, randomness into the run, but we've accepted this much already, so why not a little bit more? Cab, how you feeling? Feeling good. Loving the Zen Ascent here, just zipping through this whole stage, hitting all those cloud jump blocks, just going everywhere. Yeah, uh, Cab brought up the cloud uh, jumps or the the, the aerial uh, pads in the background. If you use the Zen Ascent, there are no traditional stage weaknesses in this game, but if you use the special powers, there are often stage interactions and also boss interactions. The stage interaction for this level is if you use a Zen Ascent on these cloud jump panels, you do get double height on them. Managed to finish quick enough to have all three options available to us. I'm going to take the height jump, uh, the jump height increase. The reason I took the fist slam before we got to this part is so I can kind of turn this into a little bit of an auto scroller. I do still have to be uh, in control of Ace here to make sure I hit as few spikes as possible, especially since they do triple damage. I'm actually getting low on my armor, so hopefully we can get something that lets us generate more and low on energy because I took damage from the spikes and that still water punishment that I took at the beginning of the run uh, did power me down in that way every time I take damage, but we'll make it work. We've got our uh, uppercuts, we've got our hovers, and we've got an awful lot of speed, quite frankly, an irresponsible amount of speed. So I'm gonna skip over this segment as well and just move on into the boss as quickly as I can. Have enough speed to outrun those knives that are normally way, way faster than a regular player. It's pretty yeah, great except to watch. the one I ran into, but everything's good. Hey, Cardi, uh, how about two donations? Ooh. Two, you got it, friend. We've got $25 from Rizukun, who says, Huge shout-outs to a tea tree for your first GDQ run. I'm so proud of you for making it onto the stage, and I wish you the best of luck. Just don't forget to pet our cats when the event is over. Less than three. Thank you very much, Rizukun. That is my partner. Uh, I love you. They're, they're out in the audience, I think. So uh, I will make sure to give our cats lots of love when we get home. And we've got $50 from Vinny Bushes. Hey, Tea Tree. So amazing to see you up on the GDQ stage. 
It's always been great to hear your dulcet tones as a host, but it's inc truly incredible to see you killing it playing this great game. Much love from the Nextlander Discord. Thank you so much. We're not quite done with this fight, so how about one more? This is one where I need to be able to pay attention as much as I can. I got you, friend. We've got uh, $50 from Shay. Hey, Teetree, I have an extremely important question that I'd like to know the answer to. Go ahead, Shay. Would you consider yourself to be book smart or money smart? Uh, no, but thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was Hoot Omega, the big brother of Loot Omega from earlier. And as much as he is very friend-shaped and a good boy, um, he is not serving us any help in our run. So, so was, we had to do the needful there. Going to go into one more challenge room. This is one of the Break the Targets. So Smash Brothers fans, this one is for you. Technically, we're just touching the targets, but uh, this is a special challenge mode added in 1.1. And uh, I, I, my brain says break the targets every time I go into one of these. So you got to hear it, too. We didn't want to get sued. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> All right, where am I at right now? Um, I'm going to take the charge time reduction so I can use fully charged attacks more often because I took a power up earlier that makes charged attacks more powerful called the intensifier. Because we're coming into this level a little later in the run, this is uh, surprisingly maze like already. Some of these sections have lots of spikes. We don't have hazard immunity just yet, although we are only one armor piece away, so maybe we'll get there. The Cool Spawner, my favorite enemy in the game. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't give everybody the opportunity to say hi to the Cool Spawner, but the Cool Spawner is very, very cool. On into our mid-boss here, kind of our other Gemini Man situation, like in Penumbra back in level two. There are two enemies here. They uh, do not share health bars in this case, but they put out lots of projectiles. Thankfully, we were able to make it through that relatively unscathed. I will take more health because uh, more health is probably always good. Unfortunately, again, no more useful prototypes. Um, there are a ton of prototypes in this game. Casually, they're an awful lot of fun. The one on the right just there is called the Auto Loader, which technically grants you every weapon your character has available to them in the entire game. But the downside is that it switches through them randomly every couple of kills you get. So, uh, you know, if you can survive your way through that, uh, if you want to get a sense for what the weapons are, and if you are able to get a we an item that we got on the last level called the System Restore, which only shows up once per game, you will actually lose, as we just did, all of the downsides for the challenge conditions. I forgot to mention that. I realized just now that it's something that happened in the last level. So we are actually no longer taking maximum health damage immediately or triple damage generally. But any other prototypes we pick up for the entire rest of the game, we cannot cure those negative conditions. So let's see if we can make it a little spicier going across the last few, level, last few levels, and otherwise we will just make it as fun as possible. This is Echo Beast. This is the Chill Vibes boss, Lo-Fi uh, lo Beats to defeat bosses too. He is wearing his headphones. The uh, boss arena is uh, air conditioned, so please don't worry about him. He's living his best life. At, at least for a few more seconds. I'm sorry. I feel bad about this. The jokes kind of write themselves, but this is honestly a great boss. I'm glad we didn't fight him at the end because he can use up to four of those bouncing bolts if we're at the end of the run. So I'm glad to see him when there's only three. Uh, I'm not quite as powerful as I'd like to be in terms of outgoing damage, which is kind of unbelievable to those of you who are used to, like, time to defeat for Mega Man bosses. But this is actually kind of slow. So let's see if we can't fix that over the last couple of levels of the run. I'm taking... Yes, I love to see this power-up. This is a power-up for the Fist Slam that makes it move twice as fast. And that is a free four-second time save in the final level, thereabouts. So... There's a 50% chance of that. Every power-up, if you uh, take it a couple of levels later, there is an opportunity for a special bonus um, portion of it. Another break the targets! Smash Brothers fans eating good. But yeah, so we were able to take uh, a random one of the two upgrades, and the one that we got was the one that makes it go even faster, and we love to see that. Taking a little bit too much damage here. Let's see if we can... Navigate up to the third one. We cannot afford to take more, but there's only one left to hit. So we get our choice of power-ups one or two. Number three would have been amazing. It would have made every core we have basically free to equip. I didn't even talk about the course, uh, core points system at all yet. Cab, would you like to take that one? Yes, all those armor pieces we were talking about earlier, they cost something called core points. It's a little just another health metric we have inside. You go into the menu, core costs so much to equip or not. That item that we just passed up would have made the, reduced the cost of all those, which would have been great. But uh, we just got Contractor Beta, which is another great one. 
all of your stats go up based on how close you are to max health, so now we really don't want to get hit. Because as soon as you start losing hit points in this, those attacks go from like amazingly overpowered to uh, amazingly underpowered. Yeah, one of the one of the few true multiplicative power increases in the entire game, but unfortunately, because we no longer have Crushing Hysteria active, we can actually suffer the downside of Contractor Beta. So once you're below about 75-80% health, you're actually doing less than 100% damage, down to like 30% at extremely low health. It's actually let's funny because when you start reducing the max health, like you said, you never go below max health. All right, and now that's no longer the case. We went ahead and took a Face Smasher. Uh, what it does is right there in the name. I'm going to use my Zen Ascent for one of the things that uh, I actually expected to use much earlier in the run, but because of how much move speed we got, which also um, changes the uh, trajectory of your horizontal jumps, we really haven't needed it before now, but Zen Ascent can be repeatedly triggered to kind of scoot up walls like we're doing here. So that is something that it's also uh, the reason why I like to take it first. We've got ourselves a shop here. Let's see what we get. Uh, unfortunately, we can't reroll, so three out of the five of these are useful, including an additional 20 run speed. Uh, that actually um, does not have the full efficacy if it does the first time you get it. Do you know what the drop-off points for the speed there are, uh, CK? Uh, there's no actual total breakpoint. It eventually it just scales infinitely, but it is kind of on DR after 32. 32, got it. I say I know it's like 100%, then 50, then 25, then 10, something like that, so... Yeah, I think it's uh, 4, 8, 16, 32, maybe? Got or, it. You know, sort of breakish points, but still keeps going after that. All right, this is technically a boss where you're supposed to defeat. Um, but ideally, what you want to do as a casual player is defeat all four faces at once. What we're doing instead is we kind of made ourselves a little divot on the bottom half of the screen, knowing that we still only have that one piece of the vagrant set, and therefore every time we attack too much and fill up on corruption, we lose the ability to do everything but dash. So I made myself kind of a little safe hidey hole down here on the bottom half of the boss fight, so that every time that happens, I can dash a couple of times and be ready to go again. Every time you destroy one of the clock faces here, the rest of them just start attacking more ferociously. Yes. So yeah, you gotta yeah. be a little careful here. It's basically... So normally you want to evenly DPS them down, but of course here, uh, we're just gonna hide in that little corner there and, uh, you know, negate most of those attacks since t -Tree knows exactly the, the rhythm of the boss's attacks and knows when he's gotta get out of the way of the important one. Yep, took a few hits there. We're, we're out of armor, but everything else went very cleanly. Can't be unhappy with that. Love, by the way, the uh, brave boldness of getting resonant legs, uh, rolling into random vagrants boots and electing to keep them on and not turn them off. That's true bravery right there. Oh, yeah, uh, all mean... of those boots T-Tree could have gotten would have been huge mobility boosts, except for the one he gotten, or got, which is just kind of dangerous and makes things harder in a lot of cases, and he just left them on. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I, I don't have the ability to change things except between levels, um, and overall the extra uh, speed and power from uh, the corruption system is going to be at the very worst the net neutral. Um, maybe it's a slight net negative now that I have Contractor Beta, but at this point we're basically at the end of the run. There's like one or two more opportunities to change things out, and I'm not going to worry about it too much unless I have to. That was a mini boss. Hello and goodbye. Where did it go? I don't know. That thing had Big a family, snack. you know. How could you? Look, it might have had a family. Like, everything in this universe is robots, so either we're all one big family or... You know what? Let's not get into the all philosophical right. implications here. All right. I'm a second gauntlet, sure so we're going to see if we can get one more of those uh, power-up chips for us. Make it through a relatively dangerous corridor, because it's not like there's a super high density, but everything bounces. This is the chest plate guardian. See how quickly we can get him down. Use Storm Herald. Nice and easy. We actually didn't have any chest pieces until then, so we just got the Zookeeper's Phalanx, which is great. Is one of the... Oh, oh say hello and goodbye to uh, Deepverse Part 2, on average, the shortest level chunk in the game. Um, but yeah, what this does is it gives us a base 10% uh, chance to negate damage resonated with the upgrade chip to t uh, 20 or 25. And then every uh, little robot buddy, the repros we have behind us, increases that chance even further. Yeah, so I believe up to a max of 50, so you're going to be getting quite a lot of damage reduction pretty quick. And I just grabbed a CQC Enthusiast, which is an absolutely wonderful DPS increase. It increases the base damage of, Z of Ace here's Saber Slashes. So everything else we've gotten so far this run works off of that new increased base damage. So yeah, we, we do a lot more damage now. Yeah, you've gotten a huge damage boost in the last two My levels legacy. here. CQC what just happened? There was, from there was supposed level. to be a second and maybe a third phase there, but no need. We're good. We're good. Gotta keep the marathon on schedule. Lots of our bosses have three phases unless you happen to delete them in the first four seconds because you have become partially fused with infinity.
This one is for Timeout. I am taking Asafune. Uh, I don't use it most runs, but I figured I should take it anyway. So shout outs to the 20XX, 30XX Discord, discord.gg slash 20XX. Uh, great people there. People who have both uh, kind of inspired me to get running, helped me figure out um, things throughout the run. People like uh, Mikrowatz, who I think was mentioned in a donation earlier. Um, Nunu, who is uh, a Japanese runner who has not come back for the current patch, but I will freely admit is better at this game than I am. Uh, just a bunch of wonderful, supportive people. This is Kerr from 20XX, and that was Kerr from 20XX. I promise you there was a stage underneath that that's actually kind of hard. It's over a giant chasm. We just jumped the entire thing. Yep, and then I picked up five random upgrades. Uh, the reason we're getting so much trading done with the Mysterious Trader here is because we are trading in useless garbage to her. We don't know what it does, but she sure seems to, to know what it's about. So she gives us the most scrap bits of any item trade-in in in the game that we can get every time we give her random garbage. And because we have five copies of it every time we see her for the rest of the game, we can give her more garbage and walk away with more neat stuff. This is basically our boss refight level. Unfortunately, I'm out of armor, so I am actually taking knockback damage, which I was not quite expecting. But uh, every level, uh, every stage segment in this is made up of two gimmicks from levels earlier. You may recognize things like the Dustria Crushers, uh, the lasers from um, Deep First. The word's going to make our way through. Uh, there's on average either four or five chunks to this level. So we're making our way through them as quickly and proficiently as possible, uh, knowing that we are still suffering knockback damage every time our damage doesn't get negated, which still happens a decent amount of the time. I would have loved to go back for that armor, but no time to stop now. This is why it's really good we got that system to store, because this level is just covered with spikes and hazards. And as long as we're taking damage from it, yeah, we need that health. Right, but we don't have... Uh, actually, no, Contractor Beta was the one thing we did take after the System Restore, so if I can True. sneak a little bit more health in, I will gladly do that. There's a little bit for us. So you will actually yeah, you probably... Do have it now, so you're hovering around 100% damage. Any lower health than this, and I think you'll be yeah dealing a little reduced. Yeah, let's see if we can get ourselves a shop. No, but we did get a, a, a health vendor, so I will gladly take that. A little bit of bonus armor. And this is our boss refights. Yes, all of them. Eleanor is one of the uh, scientists left in this world who sees that there is something going on and uh, tries to stop us from saving this world because uh, she has reason to believe that each time we save the world, things get only more dangerous for us. So she's trying to stop what she calls the big crunch, and uh, we're trying to stop her. A, a clash of wills, to be sure. She has the ability to uh, use as her health changes basically the uh, tactics and stage hazards from every boss in the game. But we were able to defeat her, get a air dash, which is something that's absolutely great for us, skip a lecture because she does like to tell us uh, how foolish we were and how this universe is ruined, but we will yeet ourselves straight down to Midgard, the Swallower of Space, and the final level of 30XX. I will tell you now that this uh, level is once uh, a run with this kind of danger profile gets going well. If you make it to the end, level 10 is kind of a uh, formality. So if uh, my commentators, Cab and CK, would like to do their shoutouts, now would be an absolutely lovely time to do so. CK, thank you uh, for making this game. Yes, thank you so much, <laughs> CK, and the entire Battery oh, Staple Games team. Uh, yeah, just shout outs to uh, our early access community, our super friends, uh, the folks that helped us make this game great uh, as, as well as we possibly could while we were making it for, you know, the, the many years that we spent making it. Uh, you know, somehow we've been getting to make these kinds of games for about 10 years and we continue to have fans who are buying and helping us make the things better so we can afford to do it and make it as best as possible. Uh, and we will never, ever stop appreciating that. Uh, of course, shout outs to the whole Battery Staple team too. Uh, we're, we're so happy to get to keep working with you guys. Shout outs to you all. Elevator going down to the ground floor. Cab, any oh words from you? Oh my gosh, it's so fast. Yeah, there's our free time save. Cab, what you got for us? I mean, just that. Thanks for making this game. Thanks to the whole community who worked hard on like figuring out all these combos. This has been a blast to run. I highly recommend everybody just who wants to play more Mega Man, play 20XCX, support this community. It's wonderful. Get this game. Here, here. Pretty good timing for the final boss segment here. Yeah, absolutely. These look suspiciously like us. I wonder what that's about. Eh, I don't know. They do look much. like us. Hmm. That one Could looks like anyway. me, but like a weird robo head. Wireframe something or other. Yeah, like almost like I've seen that from another game. I don't know. Maybe. Big bonus shout out to Alex, our uh, server engineer, for designing that robo head. <laughs> nice. Shout outs to Alex. So yeah, you want to see me beat the final boss? I just did. You want to see me beat him again?
And like any good Mega Man X respecting game, of course, we have a final escape sequence from the crumbling uh, belly of Midgard, the belly of the beast. We are now going so fast that we are occasionally able to get off the far right side of the screen. Love to see it. I'm glad I got to show that off. I just love the giant floating monster head chasing you. And as soon as we get into the capsule, in four, three, two, two one, one, time! time. Nice! That is 30XX New Game Plus in 2920 IGT, which I'm going to guess is about tw um, 3130 RTA. Her, do you want to check me on that? You're looking at 3124. Pretty close. Yeah, my Incredible. name is T Tree. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here as part of AGDQ 2024, especially to Mr. Cab, who... Uh, too modest. You have a run coming up. You're on commentary for the next run, too. Please stick around to watch Mr. Cab. Please feel free to go over to discord.gg slash 20xx to support um, CK and his entire team, uh, the Battery Staple Games team, 20xx, 30xx. They are absolutely amazing. Shoutouts to them. Shoutouts to the Fast-Paced Events team. A uh, bunch of good friends, people who are here at the marathon, including uh, Amber Cyprin on commentary yesterday. Argic, Pumpkin Spice, Mindez, who also had a run, Hypnotics, who will have a run later in the week. You are all amazing people, and I love you very much. Shoutouts again to my partner, Rizukun. Um, without you, I wouldn't be here doing this. That is true for so many more ways than I can say in a space of time this short. Thank you to everyone, and um, yeah, as, as they watch the sunset, we're going to pet the cat just a few more times. Yeah! Stay tuned, everyone. Thanks again.